Glory to God. Saints, look at my outfit, man. Look at my outfit. I fit this outfit together. I fit this outfit together. What's up, everybody? Greetings to you. Greetings to you, everybody. Saints, look at my outfit. I put this outfit together. <laughs> I put this outfit together. There's nothing to be fearful about. There's no fear in the anointing. I'm doing these wisdom doors broadcasts because wisdom is the elimination of all fear. Wisdom is the elimination of all fear. No fear can live where wisdom lives. As a matter of fact, a lot of times, it's fear that connects you to a wrong person. It's fear that connects you to a wrong job. It's fear that connects you to a wrong family member. It connects you to a wrong thought. The Bible said, I believe it was in Timothy. It said that God has not given us the spirit of fear. The spirit of fear is so deadly because the Bible says in 1 John that in fear it has torment. So fear is actually a tormenting demon. So whenever you're in fear, you're in a hellish realm. You're in Sheol. Sheol is the place, if you don't know, where David prophesied as if he was Jesus. And he said, you will not leave my soul in Sheol. Fear is a hellish realm, is a satanic realm. And it causes you to make a lot of decisions that God never wants you to make. Whenever you're operating in fear, you detach yourself from the Holy Spirit. You're not free to serve him. You're not free to obey him. And wisdom eliminates fear. Wisdom is the murderer of fear. Praise is the killer of fear. The same way that wrong company can corrupt, strong company can product. Wrong company can interrupt, it can corrupt, but strong company can product. Whenever God is about to do something, to take you out of fear he has to connect you to one of his kings because a king is an ancient spirit you'll never understand a divine king if you're in the flesh a divine king doesn't follow your rules and regulations people people try to give me advice you think i listen to them nick uh, <laughs> no I never take nobody advice. I just let it go in one ear and out the next ear. I ain't going to hell for you. <laughs> I ain't going to hell for you. Where were thou when God gave me the anointing? Where were thou when God gave me my assignment? You was nowhere around when I got it and I ain't listening to you. <laughs> always remember that people that God did not use to give you the anointing cannot tell you how to conduct it did you ever see Moses go to Aaron and say Aaron what 
What should I do? I don't know what to do, Aaron. Did you ever see Naomi go to Ruth and say, Ruth, what is God telling you I should do? What should I do? Why? Because the anointing did not come through Ruth to Naomi. It didn't come from Aaron to Moses. Hold on, saints. I'm driving. Hold on. Give me one second. One second. Because I just saw the police. Y'all can't mess with the police. I'm chasing after you. What I have to do. I need to Saints, I'm coming. More and more, more, more and more. I'm chasing that What it Second, Saints. Give me one second. Give me one second. But fear is a demon that stops you from being the best woman, the best man. You never let fear grip you. I don't get fearful. There's nothing that I'm fearful about. I don't live in fear. There's, there's never a time in my life that fear controls me. Not once. I have no fears. Your anointing increases when you refuse to walk in fear. Your promotion from God is established when you refuse fear. God often studies to see whether or not you'll overcome your fears. Oftentimes, God will pitch you in situations that you fear to show you whether or not you have overcome your fears. There's always going to be a moment in your life where God is going to test you to see if you have conquered fear or if fear has conquered you. You can never experience the level of life that God wants you to walk in if you're fearful. You can't even sow seeds. There's seeds that God will have you sow that you can't even sow if you're fearful. When you're fearful, you can't sow the seed. There are seeds that's going to unlock millions of dollars for your life. But you'll never have those millions of dollars if you're fearful. Fearfulness causes you to be broke. 
Sometimes you say, I don't know how I'm going to get to this job. I don't got to wait. And it's fear stopping you from applying for the job. Fear often causes you not to minister to someone in public that God is speaking to you to minister to. You have a word for them and you never get to them because you're fearful. Fear, the fear of people. How many people can sing so good, but they'll never sing because of fear? Fear is a crippling spirit and Satan uses it for you to sabotage your own destiny. Fear is a conversation with demons. It's a conversation with satanic agents. Fear is where an evil spirit speaks to you in your heart and causes your meditation to commit to everything that God says is illegal. Satanic agents are behind, behind fear. They cause you to create a covenant with demons. They cause you to create a covenant with wrong thoughts. Fear will stop you from the path that God has you. And they'll begin you on a path that God never wanted you. God has not given you the spirit of fear. So whenever you find yourself becoming fearful, you're not operating with God. You're not operating with God. Always remember that. That when you are in fear, you're not operating with God. He's not leading you. He's not in control of you. And there's nothing that you'll do while you're in fear that can please God. Remember the Bible says that no man can please God in the flesh. I believe that's in Romans. No man can please God in the flesh. When you're in fear, you're in the flesh. You're in self. That's what flesh means. You're in self. When you're in fear, you're in self. And what begins to take place is that you lose the opportunity to intensify the anointing on your life. You lose the opportunity to obey the prophet. You lose the opportunity to have more of the favor of God. You lose the opportunity to be wealthy. You lose the opportunity to be rich. You lose the opportunity to be free. Fear. Now angels are responsible for keeping your environment encouraged. Depression stops angels from fulfilling their ministry in your life. Discouragement, it shuts down angelic ministry in your life. Whenever you're in discouragement, you're not able to move with your angels. Whenever you're in fear, you're not able to move with your angels. As a matter of fact, when we deal with fear, fear stops angelic ministry. Hold on, I'm going to pull over. Hold on. Someone please call 911. That's all about five officers about to pull over, so... They don't do me nothing. Now, saints, here's the crazy thing. Whenever God has angels in your life, angels are responsible for keeping you encouraged. Angels move when you're in encouragement, when you're in praise, when you're in thanksgiving. Your passion invites angels, your passion for God, your passion for people. Your passion to see others successful, others prosperous, will cause prosperity angels to move with you. Your passion to see others healed will cause healing angels to move with you. And what you pray for others, God will always give you the harvest of it. What you think about for others, God will always give you the harvest of it. Whenever you're around your angels, the angels of God, they, they move the most when you're focused. They move the most when you're obedient. They move the most when you're fearless. They move the most when you're courageous. If you remember, God kept telling Joshua in the Bible, and he always would speak. He would say, be strong and of good courage. 
he would continually tell Joshua or the man of God to be strong and of good courage. Now, saints, I want you to understand for God to say, be strong. Strength is a decision. If God is telling the man of God, be strong, that means that strength is not decided by God. You decide how far you go in the anointing. You decide how far you go in virtue as a woman. You decide how far you go in, in dominion as a man. You decide your wisdom. Because the Bible said in James chapter 1, let any man go and ask God for wisdom and he'll give him liberally. Which shows you that even wisdom is decided by you. The Bible said in Luke 2.52 that Jesus increased in wisdom. So wisdom has an increase. You decide the increase of wisdom by your attentiveness. You decide the increase of wisdom by your sanctification. Not letting everybody speak in your ear. God gives you one vo voice as your prophet. You'll always have an Elijah in this life. You'll always have someone that God can speak to and they'll deliver the message to you without altering it or destroying what God wanted you to hear from it. In this life, the way that you protect your anointing is you protect your gates. You protect the entrance of words. You protect the entrance of images. The Bible say casting down imaginations. Images are imaginations. Imaginations were created for divine thinking. Imagine, God gave you your imagination for you to picture the word, for you to picture the scripture. God gave you an imagination so that you'll never enter into stagnation. Nothing will be able to slow down your dream, your faith, your obedience, your cheerfulness. Don't let nothing in this life make you fearful. Not your bills, not sickness, not enemies, not wrong, wrong reports. Let nothing create fear in you. There's nothing in this life that creates fear in me. Nothing. I don't have fear for nothing. Whenever you step into the place where there's no longer fear ruling you, that's when Jesus can bring you close to him. That's when Jesus can be your best friend. That's when you can hear from the Holy Spirit without any interruption. That's when you can begin to walk in an anointing that many people haven't been able to walk in. But you have to make that decision. Your angels, they can't move. When you're fearful, when you're intimidated, when you're distracted. Your angels can't move when wrong people have access to your ears. When wrong people have access to your focus. You have to guard your boldness. Keep it strong. And keep moving with God continuously. Don't let anybody stop your boldness. Stop your courage. Stop your faith. Last but not least, I want to talk to you about supernatural sowing. Because supernatural sowing will deliver you from the hands of the serpent. Supernatural sowing delivers you from the verdict that Satan has placed on your life. When you're sowing, your life enters into the courtroom of God. And Michael, the archangel, we see in Jude chapter one, when Satan was asking for the body of Moses, that Michael is in attendance in the courtroom of heaven. When you're sowing, Michael is attending all of your court cases. Every matter where it seems like you didn't receive the money God wants you to have, you didn't receive the finances that God wants you to walk in. You didn't experience the favor that God scheduled for your life. There is a verdict from God that is released. When you sow in, supernatural sowing 
The reason why it's called supernatural sowing is because the devil in this natural realm can't hinder you from doing it. Everything in your life is sent to stop you from honoring God. Everything. Bills, enemies, attacks, sabotage, everything. Sickness is created to stop you from honoring God. It don't want you to honor God in your finances. It don't want you to honor God in your 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 money. Everything in your life has been sent so that you would stop sowing. Why does the devil even cause people to become depressed so that they'll stop sowing? Because depression is the exit of divine expectation. Depression is the exit of divine expectation. Depression is the exit of thinking about divine promises. You leave where God wanted you to receive. Supernatural sowing allows the Lord to step into a situation, bring peace, bring victory, and bring justice. When you're sowing, you can have whatever you desire from God. Jesus spoke to me and he says, son, preach prosperity. Preach the good news of me giving prosperity to my people, me giving wealth to my people, me giving riches and abundance to my people. Abundance is a divine thought from God. He thinks about it all day. How could I increase you? How could I give you more? How could I cause you to enjoy your life? How could I give you a greater income? Jesus is constantly thinking about financial favor towards you. The reason why Jesus pits the money bags in your hands is so that you can fulfill kingdom assignments, so that you could be the head and not the tail above and not beneath. Supernatural sowing invites Jesus on every situation. It stops Satan completely. The seed stops Satan completely. When you sow in, you stop the devil. When you sow in, you bind the devil. You take apostolic authority over the devil when you honor in God with your substance. In Malachi, when it said, will a man rob God? It never talked about the lack of prayer. It never talked about the lack of fasting. It says, will a man rob God? It talked about money. Because when you use money as a seed and you plant it into Jesus and you plant it into the gospel, you plant it into the anointing, you welcome every single promise in the word of God to come to pass in your life. And everything that you desire will take place. The seed gives you privileges, divine privileges, divine prosperity. Job 36 verse 11 said divine pleasures. When you're supernaturally sowing, God will stop destruction for your sake. He'll bring you into what belongs to you. And he'll give you grace to live on top of this world. Sowing your way out is a divine behavior from God. Everything in your life, Ecclesiastes chapter 11 reveals to us that Satan stages things in your life to stop you from sowing. He creates false distractions to stop the seed. Even persecution is a seed blocking demon. Fear is a seed blocking demon. Common sense is a seed blocking demon. Sowing is the wisdom of God to bring you out of every single attack that the enemy planned for your life. When you're supernaturally sowing, you invite Jesus to do what he always wanted to do in your life financially, physically, relationship-wise. And when you're sowing, you release the protection of God on your life. He's going to protect you and deliver you from all evil. 
and preserve your soul. When you ask God for wisdom, he's going to step you into honoring him. He's going to step you into sowing. Sowers have greater angels moving with them. Sowers have greater wisdom. They have greater solutions. Sowers hear the voice of God 24-7. He's always speaking to the sower because honor increases God's desire to talk. Sowing increases God's desire to conversate. Sowing increases God's desire to touch you, to impart to you. Sowing inspires God to pick. This is most times how he picks who he's going to favor. The sower, Bible talked about the one with five talents, the one with one talent. But then God picked the one with the five talents, gave them another five, and then gave them the one from the one that only had one. Which shows you how sowing, it multiplies the favor of God on your life. It causes the Lord to pick you to carry bigger assignments, bigger Wealth, bigger finances, bigger increase. When you sow in, there's a conversation over your life between Jesus and angels. And he speaks to them about how they can make your life better on earth. What they can do to connect you to people that love your success, love your prosperity, love your abundance. There's a conversation that goes on where Jesus will link you to people that love seeing you have increase and wealth. Sow your way out. And the seed that God is going to always have you sow is going to protect your mind so that when wickedness come, when witchcraft come, when evil come, it won't have the victory over you. When you sow in, the Lord won't let you be deceived. He won't let you be tricked. The spirit of God will speak to you. The spirit of God will give you insight. The spirit of God will wake you up in the night and minister truth to you. The powerful thing about sowing is that it makes you and Jesus inseparable. Nothing shall separate you from Jesus, the love of God.